Hey everybody, uh, my name's Rob. This is Todd. I'm Todd. All day. <laughs> all day, all day, Todd. All day, Todd. <laughs> and uh, we're back for another show, and uh, this is the Watch Ho Show. If you watched the last show, you know that, that we call ourselves the Watch Hoes because I have in my collection, I've been collecting it for about four or five months, I have over 60 watches uh, so far in my collection, and that expands on a weekly basis if I can get away with it. And then those who watched the, the first show know that that Todd pretty much has a watch store in his house. <laughs> with, I've got enough watches, Rob, uh, yeah, that uh, it becomes difficult to choose which one to wear. Yeah, if you're ever in the East Valley, you don't have time to go buy a watch, go, go buy his house and he'll, he'll uh, open up the store for you. He, he admits to 170 watches. I'm guessing that's more, more than maybe 300 more or something like that. No, it's a lot of watches. No, I don't lie, it's accurate. It's about that range. So today, we're gonna dive in to diver's watches. And uh, the diver's watch is something I really didn't understand. I didn't get the mystique of it. Uh, Todd, I've known Todd for a long time, and he's, he's worn diver's watches for a long time. And uh, I'm more of a, just a leather band, I don't know, business. What are you wearing class. today, by the way, well, Rob? Okay, sure. You know, maybe we should do our uh, watch, watch check. check, yeah. So what today, yeah, today I'm, I'm sporting my uh, Seiko. Uh, this is a love the Seiko. I know it's it's a great brand as well, and it, it really fits my price range really well. But the thing, you know, as I is got that one of their solar it watches. Is, yes, it's a it's a solar watch. But it doesn't need a battery, uh, which is also very nice. But uh, you know, I've got sixty watches. I open the drawer, and I'll be honest today. I opened the drawer and I saw my Seiko with the yellow stitching, and I'm like, oh, I got yellow stitching in my shirt, and that's how I picked the Seiko today. But I have quite a few Seikos, and uh, they're just a really, really good watch. Yeah. Good price point, it's too. It's chronograph. I love it. It's a and beautiful watch. I think I paid, because uh, we like to let our viewers know kind of what we're paying here. Again, not, not retail, but I think I paid around $50, as yeah. I'm guessing right around there. So, yeah, and that probably retails for what range? Um, I'm guessing uh, 160 to 220 or something like that, depending on when you, where you buy it. Right. So... And I love the fact that uh, it has the, the matching uh, yellow uh, points on the on the face here and on the uh, second hand, which is really cool. It goes with the yellow stitching. So, and if you look real close, it's got a yellow line. You probably can't see it, but we'll we'll show some closer pictures for you. It's got a yellow yellow line on the uh, on the stem. Is that what we call it? Mm -hmm. On yeah. the stem as well. Which yeah. is really cool. So, what do you got, Tom? Well, today, Rob, I'm wearing an Oris automatic. It's uh, it's got a matte face. Uh, it's pretty plain looking, uh, but I do like the simplistic look of it. It is on a stainless steel bracelet. Um, of course, this most of these Oris watches have an Eta movement in them, and they decorate them a little bit. Uh, kind of traditional to the Oris is how they uh, paint the rotor uh, red. So that's pretty... Uh, Pretty, anytime they have an open back case, usually you're going to see the red on a Norris watch like that. Do you find the bracelet, as you call it, um, does anything with your arm hairs? Is it uncomfortable? I no. remember back in the day, every time uh, I, I'd, people would just complain that you know they couldn't wear them because the, the hair on their arm was just like getting ripped well, off. Well, that's it, Rob. That's a that's a, from cheaper bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to find um, that on that one, so. Yeah, very seldom do I ever experience any. Uh, I am kind of a hairy guy. I don't experience much arm uh, hair discomfort. Because that can be a pain for some people. Right. No, um, you know, they still make some bands that are cheaper that were elastic, that were metal, mm -hmm. that they would stretch. And um, those would always uh, snag hair. And then these are solid link bracelets. Uh, so. Uh, there are bracelets that are folded, and those folding bracelets where the pieces are folded metal, um, those have more room to uh, snag your hair and can create problems. But, but these nicely bracelets, uh, I, I really don't have any problem with that. One other quick thing, this is a probably about the <clears throat> smallest face watch I will wear. I've got a couple that are smaller, and this is right at 40 millimeters. So, oh, yeah. um, And then the thickness, this one's not too thick. Most I try to like, get thin ones, but... And this one's 10 millimeters, uh, so you get an idea of, of I'm gonna how that I'm going to guess that this is very similar. This is, uh, yeah, about 41 millimeters and then uh, about 10 millimeters thick. 
So this is on the smaller size. Um, I have about uh, seven and a half to eight inch wrist, which is probably um, leaning towards a larger size wrist. But uh, this is probably one of the smaller watches that uh, I wear. I know, uh, you know, historically a 39 Rolex made a lot of their watches at 36 millimeters at one point, and I think they still have some on the market that way. But uh, the market's are, moving up. The right? market has moved up yeah. in size. Um, uh, last episode we showed you some watch sizes, and uh, Invicta makes a lot of huge watches. So. Uh, but some of the other name brand, uh, some of the brands out there do the same thing. So, so the divers watches that we're going to dive into. The mystique of these, obviously, because they're called the divers watch, that's what they're for. Is is diving. I'd uh, say ninety-seven percent of the divers watches out there never see water, uh, let alone go in the ocean. Um, very popular, obviously, with divers. And then in the twenties, nineteen twenty, somewhere right on there, Rolex made, I believe, the uh, Oyster model that was a diver, and then from there, just kind of. It, it kind of went nuts and every major brand was was uh, creating divers watches. So we're going to dive in to our divers watches. We both bought a few, give you an idea, uh, price point, and uh, why we bought them, and uh, we'll go from there. So the first watch I want to show, uh, Todd, is uh, the first one, the first divers watch I bought. And I think I said before that I didn't really understand the whole thing around divers watches and why people would uh, buy them. And so the first one I picked up was this uh, Invicta. Uh, Invicta makes a lot of different watches, a lot of divers watches. And so I thought I'd try this one. <clears throat> Again, it was in my price point. I picked this up for $70 at a local uh, retail shop. And I just loved the, the look of it, the blue. Uh, the blue dial, the gold, it's a very traditional Rolex-y looking watch. Uh, a lot of people have this type of look and feel. And uh, for the price point, uh, I, I wanted to try this one. The thing that I really like about this is you can see the date on most divers is uh, got that little uh, glass there where you can see the date a lot easier, which I, I really like because I'm old in my my eyes are getting weak, but so that's the uh, the Invicta about seventy. Yeah, I love the I love the Invicta. Um, you know, Invicta sometimes gets a bad rap, but uh, um, you know, depending on which one you get, you can pick up some nice Invictas for the for a good price. And uh, I particularly like this one. In fact, I have this watch in my collection as well, Rob. So the next one I want to show um, is the. This is the Seiko, and the reason I bought the Seiko watch is that cool orange dial. Um, I, Everybody's I just, got to have an orange dial yeah. or orange accented watch. So I was watching a TV show, and uh, one of the characters had an orange dial watch, and I immediately said, "I've got to have one." Now the one he was, I looked it up and made sure, you know, and he had a Shinola, whatever. Uh, and it was out of my price point, so I, I found this one. Uh, beautiful watch. Um, this one is an automatic, and so no battery is needed. And uh, it's just a really clean uh, looking watch, but I absolutely loved the orange orange face, and that's why I, I went with the Seiko. Seiko's a great brand, great price point. I, I paid less than 100 uh, for this one. I, I'm not sure the retail price. Yeah, beautiful. Great uh, cost point there on that watch. Again, this is a solid link bracelet uh, that we were talking about earlier, the same as the Invicta that you uh, demonstrated earlier. And typically on most uh, dive watches, you're going to see a uh, unidirectional rotating bezel. Um, you're also going to see usually a dual deployment clasp, meaning you have one snap and then you have another snap, which is uh, protection to losing that in the water. So, awesome. Um, the last uh, one I want to show, I've got uh, probably in my collection, maybe eight to nine divers is all. Again, uh, Todd had to make me a convert to the divers watches and I really like them now. But the last one I want to show is this really cool uh, Sterling Original. And the reason I like this, uh, it was in my price point, and it just, again, I, I'm probably drawn to the blue for some reason, but just a beautiful uh, watch. Uh, this one is uh, not an automatic, but uh, obviously has the date there, and 
again, I'm a convert to the, the diver look. And really, to me, the reason I wear divers is the durability. Uh, you can bang these things around, you can get them wet. Uh, they're pretty much the go-to do everything watch, and that's why I like the divers. Yeah. Todd, what do you got? Well, um, Rob, since you started off with an Invicta, I'm going to start off with an Invicta today. Um, I am a big fan, and let me show you, you guys this, of the Invicta uh, Grand Diver Series, and I have probably seven or eight variations of this Grand Diver Series. Um, it does have a screw down crown. Typically on the Invicta Grand Diver, they have the Grand Diver inscription here on both sides, uh, well on this side, and then on this side they have the Invicta inscription, and then on both sides, uh, where the lug, in between the lugs, you have the traditional scuba uh, deep sea diver, and then also on the stem here. So um, this comes in variations of the face as well as the bezel and I happen to this is a brand new addition to my collection uh, this watch retails for close to eight hundred dollars and I picked this up for under a hundred dollars just under a hundred dollars that is awesome yeah great value and um, typical about dive watches uh, kind of a standard is um, you can get away with 100 meters, uh, but most dive watches are going to be certified for at least 200 meters. Um, this particular watch is certified for 300 meters, and I think that's standard for all of their Grand Diver series. It does have a screw down crown, and it is an automatic movement in the back. It's not a Swiss automatic movement. It uh, is an Asian movement, um, but I have had no problem with these. I've owned these for many years. They're very durable, very reliable, very good price point, and a lot of value for the money. So that's that's one I'm demoing today. Uh, the next one I'm going to demo is a little bit of a step up in price, and uh, this is a Citizen. Um, I purchased this watch because I wanted something a little dressy but also sporty. And so with the two-tone rose gold uh, that, that we have on here and um, the bigger dial case, I thought it was just a beautiful watch. It is part of their signature series. It has a beautifully decorated uh, automatic movement. And um, I can't remember the retail price on this, but it's probably close to $1,000 and I'm not sure what I paid for this, but it was much, much less than that. I have a lot of citizens, and I can tell that uh, that is a uh, very high-end citizen watch right there. <laughs> That's very nice. And then this one here, Rob, is... Um, take a look at that. Oh, it's, yeah, the Omega. This is the Omega Very Planet, popular diver's watch. Planet Ocean. Um, this does have a ceramic bezel on it, so more durability. It has a helium release valve. Um, on the side here and a screw down crown. It is an automatic movement and it is a limited edition. This is the uh, Sochi Olympics version uh, 2014 so they did make 2014 of these. I have limited edition number uh, 1618 out of 2014. Would it be fair to say Todd that these watches are really dive watches, right? You could really dive with these, and mine are more of a kind of a dive watch look kind of thing. I mean, you're not going to go too deep with these, um, and these are more kind of that just have the dive look, but those you can actually, uh, would you say, actually do some diving? Yeah, you can dive with these. You could actually dive with yours. It's just a matter of what depth you want to go. Um, most divers, unless you're a super serious diver, you're probably not going more than 100 feet anyway. Got it. Um, most people snorkel. They confuse diving with snorkeling. Um, you can snorkel with any of these. Um, most divers are not at the level to go deeper than 100 feet or so. So, um, But this one's certified to 300 feet. This one is uh, certified to 300, uh, excuse me, meters. And, and this one is also... 
this one is 600 meters. So, tons of diver watches out there. They're great, great look, great durability. We strongly uh, suggest you go out and, and see what's out there in divers watches and, and buy some. All right, hey guys, we hope you enjoyed our show today. We showed you a little bit about divers watches and of course um, out there there's all kinds of divers watches at all different price range uh, for, for every collector out there. And uh, we appreciate you joining the show and watching and if you guys wouldn't mind, if you like the show, hit the like button, subscribe, put any comments below and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.